Okay, this is Phil Faso from Death Ensemble. I'm here at the Chilla Theater Convention with director Ted Nicola. Hey, Phil. So let's talk a little bit about subspecies. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, you're taking a twist on Dracula and the vampire myth. You're filming it in Romania. And you put together a really fine series there. Oh, thanks, yeah. Basically, uh, I grew up uh, loving Frankenstein and not liking Dracula very much. Um, and it wasn't until I got the opportunity to, to do subspecies that I gained a greater appreciation for all of the archetypes that are involved in a vampire story and the idea of eternal life and what it means to, to be cursed to that eternal life. So uh, when Charlie proposed to me, basically it was uh, for Charles Band and Full Moon uh, Pictures, it was uh, the idea of doing something ultra cheap to go to Romania. Oh, let's stop for one second. Okay, so you, you were talking about how Charles Band wanted to do the whole subspecies thing on the cheap original. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, basically what happened was uh, a guy named Jan Ionescu, who had emigrated from Romania to the United States 10 years previous, after Ceausescu fell, uh, wanted to go back and start doing business in Romania again. So he put together a deal whereby the Romanian national film studio Bufta, through a production company in Romania, would pay all of the below-the-line Romanian costs of the movie, and Charlie would just bring the cast over there. So for Charlie, it was a perfect deal. And uh, so basically they sent me over there to see if it was feasible to even make the film there. And I went over and met Vlad Paunescu, who ended up being the cinematographer, and Juana, who did the costumes, and uh, liked them a lot. And they took me around to see locations, and I decided that, yeah, this is going to be a really crazy experience because there's no food in the restaurants, there's nothing in the stores, there's very little equipment, but there's this passion for art there. And Vlad and Juana took me to some theater there and took me after the theater to where the actors would all congregate and drink and get rowdy. And it felt like being in Paris in the 20s or something. It was that artistically cool. So I told Charlie, yeah, okay, I can do this. It's going to be difficult, but let's do it. And I realized that the style of the film, based on the equipment that was there and the, the kind of shooting style, was going to be like a chamber movie or something very small scale but could have a lot of atmosphere and so that's what we tried to accomplish plus you've got great production value because you're in Romania yeah the the greatest thing about shooting in Romania especially in that period was anything was possible uh, with a little money in the right hands we were able to shoot in some of the most beautiful churches of Romania some of the most incredible ruined castles uh, and well, she looked very familiar uh, excuse me audience uh, you can edit that uh, some of the most beautiful old castles and monasteries and we could really travel to a lot of different locations and the style of movie making in Romania at the time was basically nobody could go anywhere so uh, couldn't leave the country so it took as long as it took to make a film which was not kind of the style that we're accustomed to where you've got like three weeks and you've got to be on schedule so that was the thing that we had to adapt to was the fact that the crew here is at production meetings are drinking big glasses of vodka and by the end of the production meeting it's just a crazy mess and uh, Vlad who became my really dear friend in the making of the film would just look at me with this drunken look and go don't worry Ted be happy and because uh, Bobby McFarland Farron song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, was kind of on the radio at the time. So, uh, given all those difficulties, it was still an amazing experience to stay in Ceausescu's summer palace, and that's where I kind of lived the first few weeks I was there, uh, right at, on Lake Snagoff, which is just across a little bit of water to the monastery where Vlad Dracul was buried. So everything you did there was full of weird atmosphere. And I think that one of the strengths of those films is that 
if you film that in a studio and they build cemeteries, it would never ever look like those movies do because they're all real. You know? Yeah, yeah. That in fact, we were able to shoot at some beautiful cemeteries uh, in the castles. You know, there there was a soundstage at the Romanian film studios that was the primary castle set, the big grand hall and the room where Stefan and Radu sleep. But all of the corridors and the underground passageways were at a different place in Rizhnov, which was an old ruined kind of uh, fortified town and had underground passages that were just ruined and, and crypt-like interiors where we would film Radu sleeping kind of in his dusty vault. So God knows what air we were breathing when we were there, you know, in these really old, musty places. But that plus the the ability to cast Romanian actors who are some of the great actors in the world uh, gave the film that atmosphere that I think made it work. Now, you switched Michelle's between one and two, and you went with Denise Duff for the rest of the series. Mm -hmm. what, what, what about that? Um, Laura Tate, who played uh, Michelle in the first subspecies, uh, came to Romania with the belief that we were going to be there three or four weeks. She had two young children, and uh, we ended up there for like three months. And she, uh, there was a problem at one of the hotels near the end of her stay, which you'd have to read about in my uh, in my diary, the secret diary okay. of Mr. Potato Head. But uh, she was like somebody tried to assault her, and so about a week before we were scheduled to end shooting, she this problem happened one night and she got on the next plane out of there leaving us with some scenes left to shoot for her oh dear. yeah so uh, we kind of regrouped and set out to find a girl that kind of looked like her from behind and we found a Romanian schoolgirl who had really long hair and so we had to cut her hair and cast her as as uh, Michelle and you'll see that girl in the scene where uh, Michelle and um, her friends are interviewing the old witch in, a, in her house uh, Michelle puts on one of the ceremonial masks immediately as the scene begins and that is because we did not have Laura Tate there uh, when she gets in her car and drives away when that old witch gets uh, murdered by Radu again you'll notice that it's not Laura Tate it's this girl so when it came time to shoot the second subspecies we called Laura and said do you want to come back and do it and she declined so um, then we set out to find a new Michelle. And I had seen Denise around uh, full moon because she was there on various casting calls and was really attracted by her look. And so we called her in and there there you have it. She was our Michelle from there and on out. And you had Angus Scrim. Yeah. Uh, Charlie and a casting genius, you know, wanted to put Angus Scrim in the movie. Angus was scheduled to be there for like two days. And uh, why do I think he wasn't there for two days? He wasn't. He, well, he actually he was because he, he. But the problem was he flew to the wrong airport. Oh my God! And, or his, or his plane got diverted. I can't remember exactly what happened. But the he showed up on the set one day late. So we had to get him in costume, find a wig for him, and, and that wig, I'm sorry, man, we, I wanted him to be very old, and I, I never met him before uh, he showed up on the set, and so we looked around and had to, it, it, that ended up being an amalgam of several wigs to kind of give him that old look, and uh, so he looks like kind of an old drag queen in a way in that movie. Yeah, like a vampire Liberace kind of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, uh-oh, well, this we have to shoot because he's leaving the day after tomorrow. And so we what we ended up having to do is shoot all of his scenes, every shot that included him, kind of in one day, and then all the reverse angles on Radu or Stefan on another, like, weeks later. So you can notice those discontinuities in the film, too. And how'd you find out his hope? Honest Hove came to us through 
um, when Michael Watson was cast as Stefan, he we had already cast Radu, another actor. And that actor, somehow they couldn't make a deal with him, so he fell out and we were lost and looking for a Radu. By that time, I was already in uh, Romania doing pre-production. So Michael Watson said, hey, I have a friend who uh, is on General Hospital with me named Anasove. He's a Dutch actor. He plays a great villain. And they brought, Charlie brought Anas in and cast him immediately. So Michael Watson really was responsible for us having Anas. Great. And was your, did, did you have the general look frame in mind? Yeah, for me, uh, the greatest vampire of all time was Nosferatu. And uh, so, basically, I know some people like their vampires romantic, and some people like their vampires very dashing and elegant. But for me, a vampire is an undead thing, and that's what I wanted for Bobby. And if you go back to Bram Stoker's Dracula, he's not a dashing guy in a tuxedo, a pomade, and a tie, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think, for me, that that image is much more terrifying. And, and in fact, Honest somehow managed to make him sexy as well. So, you know, we got both ends of it. Oh, I know. Well, I think one of the great things in the second, third, and fourth movies is that there's a definite chemistry between him and Denise that carries those films. Yeah, and in fact, he uh, he kind of took that character and whatever was written into it, he gave it more and more. And he's such a great actor and such a he's got such a great heart as a human being too. That one of the greatest things choices that he made was um, sort of at the end of every uh, episode of Subspecies when he sort of got everybody in his clutches and he. he delivers his speech, you know, now I have it all, don't I, little brother, you know, in the first one. In in the third one, after he murdered his father, his brother, and his mother, he said, you know what, instead of doing it with that triumphant, gloating thing, what if I do it like I am just completely dead inside now and exhausted? And And I was like, yeah, sure, give it a try, let's see what that looks like. And he did it, and you see that scene where he is just completely deflated and sits in his chair, and it makes you so sympathetic to him, even though he's the greatest monster around. You know? And I think one of the great things about him and Denise working off of each other is you have a retraction, repulsion thing going on during the entire three films. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a website called uh, Blood of the Saints that um, is a... a subspecies fan site and the woman that runs it wrote some really very elegant reviews of the films and her line which I think is is really brilliant was that uh, that these stories are about what happens when light infects the darkness and it really is true you know that Denise brought this kind of like this unwilling vampire person like clinging to her humanity and that humanity is what Radu hates and is attracted to at the same time you know sure well you've got a fan in me so. cool man I appreciate it so I want to thank you very much thank you Phil